Welcome to Understand. This is Jordan with Scientific Toolworks. Are you sick of navigating through your clunky directory structure just to find certain files? Do you wish you had a way to keep track of which developers on your team were in charge of certain items? These are problems that are cleaned up with ease using Understand's new Architecture Designer. In a previous video, we covered the basics of reorganizing your code through user-defined hierarchies called architectures. Using the architecture browser alone, it's possible to restructure your code base whichever way you see fit. However, creating new architectures is now easier than ever with the architecture designer. The designer allows you to drag and drop entities like files or entire directories into custom nodes and allows you to see your new hierarchy in graph format so you can more easily share, visualize, or make changes to it in no time. The designer also better facilitates creating your architecture from the top down, whereas the browser tends to require more of a bottom-up approach. In this video, we'll go over how to access the designer and create your first architecture with it, as well as how to edit and organize this architecture while viewing your changes graphically in real time. To open the architecture designer, go to architectures in the top level menu and then design architectures. Here you can select an existing one to edit or we can create a new one. We don't have any existing ones yet, so we'll create a new one. This will pull up the architecture designer dialog window. First things first, let's give our new architecture a name. I'm going to call mine staff and then press enter to save it. Now let's say I have a fairly good idea how I want to restructure my code base. I want to do it by staff responsibility. So first I'll add some nodes and subnodes to get started. To do so, I just need to go to the left panel and start typing the names of my nodes separated by new lines. To add a subnode, I simply have to press tab or space to indent the node under the parent. So if we go to California and press tab, we can say Jim is in California. If we do the same under Utah, Jordan and Natasha are in Utah. Great, now we have some basic nodes set up for our architecture. Now let's add some project files to them. We'll do this by simply dragging and dropping from the right-hand panel, which lists all the files in our project, to the nodes in the graph. So let me widen this up. And let's drag app into Natasha. Notice when we drag and drop an entire directory, that directory automatically becomes a subnode. What happens if we drag a single file into a node? Well, let's take a file here and drag it into Jordan. Okay, why did it disappear? Well, that file didn't become a subnode of Jordan, so it won't appear on the graph as one. Instead, when we double click a node to expand it, we'll see the contents of that node, and the file should be there. So if we double click Jordan, we'll see that the file is inside the node. Now, let's talk about what each of the buttons above the left hand panel do. If we select a node, we can press the plus button to add a subnode to it. So if we go to Jim, select it, press the plus button. Here we have another untitled node right underneath Jim. If you have a node selected, you can also press the minus button to delete it. So let's take that node and delete it. There are also undo and redo buttons that do exactly what you would expect simply cycling between the most recent changes made to your architecture. So let's say I want to undo that delete of the untitled node. I'll just undo it. And then if I want to redo it to delete the node again, I'll just redo it like that. Then we have the filter button. This button acts to hide entities that have already been added to this architecture. This is a really useful tool for making sure your entire code base is covered with every item placed into a node in your custom architecture. Let's press it and see how that affects the right-hand panel. As you can see, the app directory is now hidden, and so is the file that we added to the Jordan node. The last button is an information icon that will bring up a quick summary on how to use the designer tool in case you need a refresher. And it looks like this. Okay, some important things to notice when it comes to the architecture designer include the minimap, which is included in all understand graphs as well. 
If your architecture becomes too large to see on one screen, you can quickly and easily navigate to the node you want by clicking and dragging your mouse around the mini map here, like so. Also, you may have noticed that behind the architecture designer dialog window here, the architecture browser in the main understand window has been automatically updating with our changes to the designer. This means that once you create your new architecture here, you can rest easy knowing it's already been saved and it's accessible from the browser as well. So as you can see, we can expand staff, we can see the states, and we can see all of the subnotes within them. Okay, how about if you need to search for a specific file or directory to add to one of your architectures? You can head over to the right-hand panel, and there's a convenient search box here, where you can simply type a word or a phrase and use the arrows to cycle between matches. Like so. This was a short video on how to use the architecture designer in Understand. In this video, we covered how to create a new architecture using the designer, as well as some of its most powerful features. For more information on the architecture designer, visit support.scitools.com.